Welcome back everyone. So the calipers are done. Everything's cured, ready to go back on the car. So I need to plumb all the brake lines. And then um, install the calipers, master cylinder, all that good stuff. So if I were smart or patient, I would have waited and with the differential out of the vehicle, I would have run the rear brake lines and put the calipers on. It would have been so much easier. But um, not always smart or patient, much to my wife's dismay. So it's all in the car, which means I'm going to be on this thing, rolling around on my back underneath the vehicle, running all these lines. So let me get lights and camera under there and figure out how I'm going to logistically do this, and then we'll get going. Then I'm going to start on the rear diff, get those lines run. The main line is already on the frame, so that, that's no problem. So we'll get the rear diff squared away, and then we'll put on the rear calipers, and then we'll move to the front. So hang on, let me get underneath the car, and we'll get going. Let's get cracking. So first thing we're going to do is put this rubber caliper line on into the clip. That, oh, put the clamp on, right? Might work. There. So now we've got the line clipped in. This runs over to the caliper. I'm going to leave this hanging here and then we'll move over and get our stainless line in place. There we go. Let's feed this end in. Let's get this started first. I'm going to leave all of these lines loose until I get the calipers installed because this line's probably going to have to move a certain way or another and I don't want it tight here and then twist the rubber line. So we'll move on to, where's my bolt? This is the junction that joins the two lines for the back. Put this in a special bracket I have made for it. All right. Get this down and I'll just get that finger tight. That way I can get all these lines run where they need to go. Then once all the lines are in place, then I'll come back and I'll tighten all this stuff up. <laughs> Why don't you go in? Get threaded. There you are. Got that side about where I like it. That's down in its clamp. That's run. All right. The, we can see it, the line is up here. It's already mounted onto the frame. And it comes through this hole right here and that's where this goes in. So we'll put the head in here. See if I can't get this started. Well, it's interesting not being able to see it. There. Again, just finger tight. And there's a clamp. Clamp. It's a horseshoe clip that goes on up in here. 
I'll get that on after get all these lines run. I want everything everything in place, but all the lines I'm going to leave loose till the end. <sighs> all right, let me change angle on the camera, and we'll show this last line going in on the other side. And now we put on the driver's side line. Let's get this up in here. Get started on this end and work my way out. Again, everything hand tight. Yep, it's in place. We can pop this line in. started. Get our clip on. Come on. There it is. All right. Everything is in place, but loose. So now we're done underneath on the rear, at least for now, until I get the calipers mounted, and then I'll come back and I'll just tighten up these lines. So now it's out, and um, we'll get the calipers installed on the rear, and then start moving our way forward. And now we can get these calipers on. So first, we'll pop our rotor in place. All right, get that on. Right toward the end, you've got to get it on those shoes. That controls the park and brake. That's on. Okay, so now we're ready for the caliper. A couple quick things for the calipers. This is um, this is Ford's kit, and it uses uh, Ford like late '90s uh, Ford uh, rear disc brakes, right? Rotors, calipers. So a couple things for the calipers. If you've got a kit like this, or if you just got a Ford Explorer, the inside pad has to go on first because the ears are so big that if you have outside pad on you can't get there's not enough space to be able to get the ears in so you got to have this one uh, installed last and then when you're replacing pads this one has to come off first or you'll never get that one out <laughs> so that's the, uh, one thing another thing when you install uh, calipers if you're installing a kit or whatever it is make sure that your bleeder screw is always on top right because you need to get all the air out of the system. If your bleeder screw is down here, there's always, because air is going to go up to the top, and there's always going to be a pocket of air up here you're never going to get rid of, and you always get a little bit of sponge in the brakes. So you want to make sure that that bleeder's up there so you completely evacuate all the air out of the system, got nothing but fluid. So let's get this on. Also, because I test fit these to make sure everything fit okay, these 10 millimeter screws are long enough that if you don't have it in pre-installed on the bottom, I can't get it past the lower control arm. So we'll have that installed on the bottom, and then we will fit these onto the car. And the uh, the hooks here, the way these pads are set up, this one goes into the notch first, and then the top you slide into place. So let's get this bottom one on. Get the hooks in there. I should be able to pull this floater out. There it is. Not too bad. All right, that's already worked itself in. And we feed the top. We feed the top one in. Always takes a little bit of fiddling until you catch. That's why you never just want to use an air tool and try to drive these in. 
because there's always a little bit of finagling that needs to be done. And the last thing you want to do is uh, throw air at this and then cross thread it. And then you're, well, you're in doo doo. So you don't want that. All right. So those are in place. Let's get our let's get our fitting. It's a banjo bolt that uh, fits my line here, right? So it comes with these copper washers. You want one on each side, like so. This is what uh, keeps the thing from leaking. So got to make sure those are in, or it's gonna pour all over the floor for you. All right, let's see if I can do this without not, not getting myself in the way of the camera. There we go. And once I get this in, I'll get a nice shot from inside so you can see what it looks like installed. And again, I'm putting everything on loose so you can kind of get a feel of where everything needs to go. Make sure we don't have any binding issues. Make sure there aren't any anything that needs to move. There. That looks good. So there. That is the rear caliper installed. So there's not enough room on the other side to get in there and film. So the best thing to do is rewind this, use a mirror, and look in the mirror and watch this. And it'll look just like what the other side's going to look like when I install it. It's basically the same thing. So this is all installed. Let's just call the rear done at this point. And uh, we'll just move on to the front, get the front calipers on. Before we get started on the front brakes, I wanted to go ahead and install some of the hardware into the calipers and on the bracket. And I wanted to specifically talk about the brake line. Um, now, this is a UMI uh, disc conversion kit to use C5 Corvette brakes. So uh, in the instructions, the second page, they give you a list of all the part numbers, all the part numbers involved in putting together uh, the, the remainder of what you need to, to make it functional. One of the things they recommend is front brake hose caliper, and it's a GM part number. Uh, the part number is changed depending on where you buy it, but it's still that C5 Corvette front brake hose for the caliper. So, down to the side. So this is the Corvette hose. All right, and this end pretty standard, right? What you expect where the banjo bolt goes, that goes onto the caliper. It's this end that is the issue. This end, it'll clock into your original G-body bracket, but if you look on the inside, right? You see how that's coned in the opposite direction? C5 Corvettes used um, an ISO or bubble flare. Our cars use a uh, standard like double flare, right? So I couldn't use this hose. And I even test fitted it just like maybe it's maybe it's me. Um, I looked online, there's no way you can, there's no cross compatibility when it comes to these two style flares. But I went ahead and put it on and I ran the, the fitting all the way down. And with it as far as it would go, it's it was still loose. It wouldn't even press against the inside of this, more or less try to seal. So this just would not work. So I just uh, went ahead and ordered a set of replacement G-body front disc brake hoses. And if you look on the inside of this, you can see how the cone is in the other direction and it's set up for your standard double flared end right? And that's what came on our vehicles. So that is why I ended up going with the G-body hose. Other end's going to be fine. I mean, I, it's going to fit just the same. The block doesn't look that much different than the other one. So I'm not too worried about that. As long as you put on your, uh, your seals, you should be fine. Anyway, that is why I wanted to explain that. So let's pop our brake kit open. get out our clips. So, pop these out. I'm sure I'm not the only one to say this. I've never owned a Corvette. Um, those were always growing up out of my price range. 
So maybe now I could afford one, but now I don't want one. I want a G-body, right? That's why we're here. So anyway, I don't mind the Corvette brakes though. So let's get these installed. So if you look on the back, you can see there's a slot right here. That's where this little bad boy goes. All right, this is almost shaped like a capital letter A. Think of it that way. It goes in upside down. Start, it's got, uh, got little ridges inside here for it to go. Put that one, like wedge the top end next to the pistons in. You hear it pop into place. That's it. That's installed. Probably a little bit of uh, brake grease right here where it contact the pads. And then probably on your uh, surfaces here where and on the pistons where it comes in contact with uh, the disc brakes with the pads themselves. Let's get this bracket. You can see this is a little recess right here. That's where the, the ear of the brake pad fits into. Same thing with this. Got little ears on that. So these just push down in there. Quite easy. And once they're in, if you want to make them seat a little better, you can press right on this center. And kind of press that into the metal. That'll hold that in. Let's do the other side the same way. Let's push those in. Press on the center. That's that installed. Okay, so now with our clips on, it's time to go over to the car. All right, out here to the vehicle. First thing, a little bit of brake clean. Let's get, uh, let's get this soaked down a little bit. Brand new rotors, I probably talked about this. Brand new rotors, when they come packed, to you come in plastic. A lot of times they'll be covered with uh, some type of plastic bag and there is a grease or oil that they put on these to keep them from rusting. Well, that will contaminate your brake pads. So, we take a rag with a little bit of brake clean Get all that off. So we got a nice clean surface. All right. Rotor goes on. And because we're putting on the bracket underneath on the back side, we're going to need to keep the rotor straight while we do that. So I'm just going to get this on. A couple of washers and a lug nut. Just kind of keep this thing in place. So now, we'll get our bracket, and wait a second, we will need a little bit of blue Loctite, so I'm just going to put a little bit on each one of these bolts, UMI says these get torqued down to a hundred and twenty-five foot-pounds. So that's what we shall do. First, let me get them in place. So ears are tight. This slips on over the rotor. back here. Oh, there it is. All right. Twenty-eight 
torque wrench. Let's see. One twenty five. All right, so putting the pads in, here's the one of the pads. You'll have two of these that have these wear indicators on them. Basically what this does is as the brake pad starts to wear down, it'll get to a point where the manufacturer has decided that's as low as it's going to go, and then it hits this little metal uh, tab, and it makes this god-awful screeching noise and let you know that your brake pads are getting low. So I've noticed most manufacturers it's the backside pad and usually it's at the end of the rotation of whatever the rotor is. So if you had to put it on you would want the metal clip up on this side at the end of its rotation. And I went ahead and put that back pad on because <laughs> it's just too difficult to do on camera and show without just blocking the entire view because I just need to get my whole body back there because brand new clips uh, it's just it's a pain in the the backside trying to do it and film it so I'm just going to do the front these two these two nubs go into these notches and that's what holds the pad in so we'll do that for these Oh, why couldn't the back be this easy? All right. So there are the pads in place. Let's take care of the caliper. So now we throw the caliper on. So I add a little bit of grease from... Uh, actually, this kit didn't come with any uh, brake assembly grease, which you usually get with the pack. And I don't know if it's because these shims that they put on here are supposed to, like, Kind of stop their anti-rattle shims. I don't know. I went ahead and did it anyway, just because I had a bunch of these uh, packets. You can use. I mean, they give you enough grease in one pack to do like four brake jobs, because you don't need that much. It's just a little little dab here, a couple of spots up on the pistons. So those things will last you forever. So now we'll take the bolts. Two 13 millimeter bolts, and we'll get this thing put together. I'll put this bottom one on. So, apparently, that's the nice thing about doing Corvette brakes because you can loosen the top bolt and swing it back, and the hose will kind of hold it in place. And you can pop your pads out, put your new pads in, and then once you squeeze your pistons back so you have room, you just rotate it back down. So that's kind of nice. And that will make maintenance in the future a little nice. As far as having to replace brake pads. So that's cool. All right. So those are in place. Let me tighten those up real quick. Again, these are 13 millimeters. Just give them a good snug and that's it. So the brake line has keyways on it. You see right there. So it's only going to fit onto that bracket one way. Much as you want to turn it, until it sits down flat, you got it wrong. <laughs> so just make sure you get it to where it's flushed in there and then get your clip on. All right, so with the clip on, let's let's get our brake line started here. All right, and again, everything loose until I'm ready to go. All right. This is going to be interesting cuz I've kind of looked at the way this goes on. So basically the line is going to it's going to loop in this fashion and come back and I'm actually going to have to clock it a little bit to get it on the back. So I don't know. 
Let me see if I can get this side turned around. Maybe you might be able to see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get our banjo bolt in. Get our copper washers on. Make sure that's good to go. So then the fitting is in the back. Right there. So we'll get that tightened down. Right. That is in place and that is full lock to this side and I'm not even sure. I may have to limit the turning just a little bit. We'll have to, I have to wait and see what it looks like with the 18 inch rim on the front. See if I don't have any uh, interference up front on the sway bar or possibly when the other side is locked, it might actually come in contact on the frame over here. We'll see about that, but full lock as far as it'll go. And this stock brake hose uh, isn't stretched. It's, uh, it's gonna be loose the whole way. I've already checked it on the, uh, turning it the other way, locked out the other side. It's gonna work perfect. So. And actually fits really well. I was worried that it was going because uh, this line is actually shorter than the Corvette line. Uh, the Corvette line had about maybe that much more left on it, like hard line at the end of it. And I thought, wow, that might be an issue. I was worried, like on full lock, is the hose going to be stretched all the way out? But it's not. It's completely fine. So let me see if I can turn this back on this side. No leverage of the wheel. There we go. There it is. That's the front and rear calipers installed. So now I need to move up and get my booster and master cylinder installed. So that's what's next. Again, if you're curious how the other side went on, it was just like this one. So if you really need to see it, like I said, grab a mirror, rewind this, watch it again. That's what the other side looks like. All right, let me grab my stuff and we'll get top side and get the booster and the master cylinder installed. So now all that is left is the brake booster and the master cylinder and the two lines that run down to the proportioning valve. So this is the brake booster. If you don't know how this thing works, it's actually kind of ingenious and it's been around longer than probably you and I have been alive. Vacuum is fed from the engine into this side of this cylinder. Okay, so this side is under vacuum and there's a plate in the center. And this side has two springs on it that keep the plate centered and basically off the, the, the master cylinder of pressure. So there's a small tube on the inside that connects both sides. So with the brake pedal off, this tube will supply vacuum to both sides of this canister, basically effectively making it vacuum on both sides and it's neutral and the springs are holding it centered. As soon as you hit the brake pedal and push it forward, you open the seal on the inside and this side is now open to atmospheric pressure and that small tube is blocked off when the rod goes forward. So now you've got atmospheric pressure on this side of the plate and vacuum on this side with the two springs. So now when you push on the pedal, the vacuum assist is helping you push this thing down with little effort. So it overcomes the springs and it transfers to this rod which goes into there in the front and that hits the piston on the back and pushes the rod forward and it sends brake fluid out to your calipers and that's what stops the vehicle. This is why when the engine is off you get maybe one pump of the brake pedal maybe two if you're lucky and after that the pedal's hard as a rock because you've essentially bled all the vacuum out and now you have to fight against the springs and the and the uh, hydraulic pressure that's uh, going on inside the master cylinder. So. That's pretty much how that works. Uh, for the master cylinder, let's turn this around. 
So you've got these two lines that run and it splits the front and rear. This is in case you have a seal failure. You uh, Like old master cylinders, you had one reservoir and it fed the entire brake system. So if this failed, you lost all your brakes. So under this split system, if one of these O-rings fails somehow and you lose pressure, you lose it either, either the front or the rear, hopefully not both at the same time, and you can still effectively at least stop the vehicle. Um, so it's kind of a redundant system. It's good. Every car has that now. Um, the assumption is the rest of the lines are full of fluid, right? So all you need to do is bleed, is bench bleed this, and then um, just bleed all four corners real quick to make sure there's no extra air in the lines, and you're good. So you use a set of lines like these, the bleeder hoses, plug them into your, your two screws, and you'd run the hoses back up and into the reservoir, down to the bottom, submerged under brake fluid. You fill it up enough to uh, make sure that the lines stay under the fluid, so that way when air goes out, it's not going to suck air back in, and you don't accomplish anything. So then you use like a screwdriver handle or whatever, and you push on the plunger, and basically what it does is it pushes fluid out, and then when you let go, some of that fluid goes back. That's what keeps the pressure off your calipers when you don't have your foot on the brake pedal. So what you want is it submerged, so that way when you push the fluid, it pushes air out, any air in the system, and the bubbles come out here. And as soon as you let off, it's underneath the, the, the fluid level, so it sucks fluid back. And you keep doing that until you pump all the air out. I'm not doing any of that because the lines are completely empty. So uh, I, could, I could bench bleed this thing, and as soon as I get on the vehicle, it's just going to run fluid out, and you're still going to have an air issue. So what I'm going to do is, since the whole system is dry, this is going on dry, I'm going to fill this up with fluid, and I'm going to let gravity do a lot of the work for me until we get close to uh, having uh, fluid at all four corners, and then I will bleed from there. Anyway, so that's a rough explanation of, of what I'm doing and, and how these things work. So let's go put them on the car. So out on the car, let's get the brake lines on first. So this is the first line. It goes to the back of the proportioning valve. That's why it has this long stretch and downturn. Great thing is, fittings on these, same as a master cylinder, both different sizes, so you can't put them on wrong. You can't get them mixed up. So this one goes to the back. Let's get this started. So if you remember from one of the earlier videos, one of the earliest actually, I have a disc-disc proportioning valve. There it is. So I have a disc-disc proportioning valve on the car. So this is also new. It changes the pressure going to the back because that pressure is different for disc versus drums. There's the one line. Let's grab the other one. This goes to the front. Once these go in, I'll just push them out of the way. And we'll get the booster on, and the master cylinder, and then we'll tighten these lines down. So I'm going to leave these loose so I can move them around so they're free. So I'm going to move these out of the way for a second. So the uh, this is kind of interesting. So when I took this off, I'm pretty sure all the brake components on this car were what came on the vehicle originally. So, um, 69 Hurst Olds knows, noticed this. Uh, he's on G-Body Forum. Again, if you're not on G-Body Forum on the web, I don't know what you're doing. That site is fantastic for G-Body information. Anyway, here's the gasket that goes here. Well, he noticed that uh, when I took mine off, the original firewall, of course it's clean where the gasket came off, there was a line that went straight across and he said, hey, I think uh, your gasket was installed upside down. And it was. So you can see this curved part should be on top. Because if it's on the bottom and you line the holes up, look, there's a gap at the top. There's actually literally an opening going into the vehicle. So if you put the gasket on the right way, it covers that up. Interesting. So anyway, uh, maybe my car was made on a Monday. Or a Friday, and somebody just slapped it on real quick and wasn't paying attention. It's easy enough to do, especially if you're putting it on the booster and then putting it on the car. All right, so now I've got the gasket on. Installed correctly, 
might I say. So anyway, let's get this on the car. Let me turn these out of the way because they need to be on this side for the master cylinder. And I'm going to have to go inside the vehicle and kind of finagle this because it needs to go into that pin. So there we go. That's going to hang loose. I'm going to go inside the car and bolt it up and I got to put the, uh, the plunger onto the pin for the brake pedal and to get all the bolts tightened down. I'm not going to show you that. Go back and look at the video of me taking it out. It shows you exactly how it came out. Just play it in reverse. That's how you put it in. All right, the booster's tight, so now let's get the master cylinder on. That just slides down into place. We'll get our two 15 millimeters started. These are nylock nuts to help keep them tight once it's on. So, with that a little bit loose, let's go ahead and fit our lines. Now, not sure if you remember, these are stainless lines I got. It's a kit, and they come pre-bent. But, as you can see by the alignment, like everything, I mean, it's, it's bent to the correct shape-ish. So just like everything else on the vehicle, uh, there, you got to do a little bit of finagling to get it to work right. So I'm going to try to just torque this line a little bit. That should be enough to get it, there we go, in place. And that back one's going to be fun. Maybe, maybe I need to tighten this down. going to need to have this stable in one spot so I can kind of yank the lines around a little bit to make it fit. All right, that's in place. Now let's try to get these lines moved around a little bit. See what it needs to do. Let's see. And then that needs to curve a little bit that way. That's better. Come on. That's more like it. That one's in place, and this one's going to need to come up a little bit. That's better. All right. There it is. Okay, so now we take a step back. There's everything bolted on the car. Booster, master cylinder, all the lines, front and rear calipers. Everything is in place, and now it is just a matter of getting under there and tightening all the fittings, make sure everything is good and snugged up, and then add fluid. And then we're going to gravity bleed it by letting it run through all the lines. So let me step back, put the camera down, and actually go in and tighten all these fittings and make sure everything is snugged up and ready to go. So here's my gravity bleed setup. It's a quarter inch ID line I just picked up from the hardware store, grabbed enough. I measured it out, grabbed enough to cut all four corners. Just a plastic bottle, drilled a 3 8 hole in the top and it holds the line nice and snug. And just uh, enough line to get it all the way to the bottom of the bottle. And then right up to our bleed screw, crack all four corners. And then just get the master cylinder full of fluid and let gravity do the rest. So I've got a huge container of DOT3, and I don't want it glug glugging all over everything in case I make a spill or something. So I put some into a smaller bottle. That way I can control the pour into the master cylinder. So we're going to fill this thing right up to the tippy top. Get both of it full. Both sides. That should be enough. They want to have enough to get right to where I want it. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, 
So now we sit back, let the magic happen. After many hours, I've uh, come back out here multiple times, just making sure that the master cylinder was uh, remaining full. Got good flow on the front too. Um, actually, the one on the passenger side filled up rather quickly. So I was pleased by that. So I've got that one full, the uh, hose is submerged. Same over here, hose is submerged. Cut both these uh, bleeders off for now, and um, then I was concentrating on the rear. So let's go take a look at the rear. So after hours and hours sitting here, uh, I wasn't getting any fluid coming out of the rear. Maybe it was a proportioning valve that was uh, giving me the issue. I don't know. So what I decided to do was instead of just letting gravity do all the work, I decided to give it a bit of a helping hand. So on my, on my vacuum pump that I have, a little handheld pump, it came in a kit and it comes with all kinds of stuff and one of them is for bleeding brakes. So um, I just took the, the hose out of the bottle, connected the other end to the, to the jar here, and then just um, closed everything off. I closed the, the passenger side rear and the fronts were already closed. So I just uh, had this one line over here open. And then I just gave it a little bit of vacuum and let it bleed back down, gave a little bit of vacuum. And I tried to keep it probably right at the top, somewhere around 15 inches, right? So I just kind of would, would keep it pumping a little bit just to keep that pressure up. And then I heard all of a sudden, this line, just the, just the, you could, you could hear the fluid just pop. It was almost like it was, uh, I was like an air pocket. It just couldn't get past or something. So once that happened, and I wish I had filmed it because, I mean, you could hear it. It was just like all of a sudden, it was like, boom, here I come. So then I just took the line off, put it back into the bottle, and look at it. It's just flowing perfect. So I'm going to let that fill up a little bit, and then I'm going to cut this one off. And then the only one left is the one over on the passenger side. That's open as well. It's also flowing. So it's doing well. So I'm just going to let this fill up a little bit more, cut this one off, do the same thing on the other side and then I'm ready to start bleeding. So with all four corners flowing fluid pretty good, I tightened everything up, and what I did was I went inside, uh, got myself some lunch, had a little something to drink, relaxed, watched TV, about maybe an hour or hour and a half, came back out, because I knew I was probably gonna have a line or two that was leaking, and I had quite a few lines. Well. There were a couple lines that were leaking. There was, a, there was a line at the back of the axle on the passenger side that went to the hose. That fitting was leaking. Um, the, the, the main line that comes, the, the main flex line that goes to the rear, that had a little leak to it. All four calipers were leaking. And the front proportioning valve, one of the lines was leaking on that as well. I'm not surprised and I'm not upset by that. I make it a point when I tighten brake lines because the flares you don't want to you don't want to destroy those things by just cranking them down. I tighten everything down nice and snug where I think it's good. And then I go back and I, I let it sit and then I go back and check and then I find my leaks and then I concern myself with those specific fittings. And inline tube will tell you what you do is if your fitting is right here and you got your wrench and you tighten it down and it's leaking or actually to seat the, the, the flare, you tighten it down, back it off, tighten it another quarter, back it off, tighten it another quarter. So you do that a couple of times and that helps to seat the flare. So I didn't do that. I just tightened everything down where I thought it was good. And then I went back and I addressed the leaks. And when I addressed the leaks, I did it basically how inline tube says you, uh, you seat the fittings. So for the calipers, this is interesting. Uh, the most information I could find um, is actually difficult finding the torque spec for the hose. It goes to the back of the caliper. So I did find that and it was 22 foot pounds. And the front were 30. I had the wrong uh, torque on the front. So that was pretty easy because you've got these... Uh, these copper uh, washers that are on either side of the fitting and you can see if you've ever taken one off you can see all the lines that are uh, pushed into that fitting or that that uh, that copper seal by um, the block on the hose so if that doesn't seat well you're going to get leaking past it so you basically you want those two uh, washers to crush a little bit 
so that it malforms itself to the block and it helps to seal. So I, uh, I found the, the torque for these were 22. So I thought, you know what? It's probably just a question of me like loosening and torquing it a bunch of times and eventually it'll like crush it to the point. So I loosened it up, tightened it back to 22, waited a little bit, loosened it up, tightened it back to 22, and then I let it sit and it still leaked, right? So that was very frustrating. So let me, let me show you what I did. I actually found this on YouTube, right? So what I tried after uh, a couple of torques and it, it didn't work, um, I saw online where you basically snug the block up and then usually there's two flat sides on both ends of that block. Uh, for, for mine, a, a 20 millimeter fit on there pretty good. And with it snugged up, you, you basically give it a crank in both directions and you kind of work those two washers to the point where they seat a little bit. So I gave that a try and then I torqued them both back to 22 and the leak definitely, definitely got a lot better um, in, in terms of how much was leaking out. It was just barely anything, but they were still leaking. I was like, on it. So what I did was I just um, adjusted the torque from 22 to 24. So I loosened it up torqued it back to 24, did both sides, waited, and there was still like a little bit of residual seepage there. So I loosened them up again and set the torque wrench to 26, tightened them to 26, loosened them up, tightened them to 26, did both sides, that did it. It was just a matter, I think, of uh, crushing those washers down a little bit, and that did the trick. So I went through, tightened up a couple of fittings, and now I've actually um, pumped the brakes hard inside the car and stood on the brakes and I can't find a leak anywhere. So I think, I think I got it. So that's it. All four corners installed, master cylinder, lines, everything. No leaks. Now, anyway, very happy. So the only thing left to do is the final bleed. I'll spare you that. It's exciting. Just uh, pump the brakes. Hold, bleed, pump the brakes, hold, bleed. Uh, I'm not showing you that. It's just, it's not exciting TV. So anyway, so that's all four corners installed. Four-wheel disc brakes, Corvette fronts, Ford Explorer rear. Yeah, and that's it. So now, uh, once I get a bled, I can put all four rims on and put it back on the ground. Then it's on to the next thing. What did Jesse James say? I love that quote. The only thing left to do now is everything. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for showing up. Do me a favor. There's a subscribe button over there. Hit that subscribe button, will you? Hit the bell. Tell a friend. Share the video. All the things. You know what to do. Anyway, all that stuff helps. Uh, go to the t-shirt shop. If you see something you like, maybe buy a shirt. The money goes back into funding the project. All right, so that's it for me. I'm out for now. See you guys.